Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm checking out a 2020 Ford Mustang EcoBoost in the premium trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 265 40 Pirelli summer tires wrapped around 19 inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has a high performance braking system with ventilated disc rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Velocity Blue. And the sun is not shining directly on it, but hopefully you can get an idea of what it looks like here. Really impressive looking blue. Uh, a lot of people, when I go to the gas station or whatever, they mention the car like, hey, nice car, I really like the color. So the color really gets people's attention. So here in the front, you can see the hood it has these engine compartment ventilation there looking nice it also has these decals uh, starting here and going back and they kind of fade out as you go to the rear of the hood so the grill it has some gloss black there at the bottom and then the center portion is like a dark gray that grill down here is a gloss black as well and then the very bottom is a matte black piece on the splitter now right in here there is a little bit of wheel well ventilation that goes into the wheel well it's mostly blocked off though Now the headlight housings have gloss black bezels, LED accents. You check out my night video uh, showing off all the interior and exterior lighting of the vehicle. It's pretty nice. Now the headlights are powered by, their LED headlights in projector tubes, but they're not all that great. Um, they're kind of mediocre for LEDs. They look nice. The vehicle looks great at nighttime, uh, but the headlights are kind of mediocre. They're, they're not bad, but they're not superb or anything like that. The fog lights are also LED. You also have LED turn signals. Looking at the profile here, uh, just like the front, you have that flat black plastic portion around on the lip spoiler. You also have that here on the sides and along, along the back as well. And it kind of blends in with the uh, wheels in this particular case, with that gloss gray wheels, nice and sporty looking, and they match the color quite well. They kind of blend in with the vehicle as far as the color and all that stuff, they don't clash. Now the upper portion of the side mirror is not body colored. It is like a gray, like a metallic gray. Can you see that? Now, if it wasn't for the wheels being that same color gray, it would kind of stand out. It seems to be a little bit odd that the side mirror is not body colored, but the handles are body colored here on the door. This portion, this little pillar right in here is a gloss black. And you do have a little bit of a window in the back seat area. And it has this badge uh, that kind of gives it away that it's a four cylinder right in there. Of course they have to say high performance cause it is, it, it, it's amazing uh, driving the vehicle. It just doesn't feel like a four cylinder. This is what the key looks like and it's a proximity key and you can use the vehicle hundred percent without taking it out of your pocket or your bag. And it feels like a very solid key but it is, does have some weight to it. Um, it is kind of heavy and kind of bulky uh, for something that you have to carry around with you everywhere. But it does have some useful buttons here, lock, unlock, 
panic button. Let's go ahead and push that. Nice strong horn. And to open up the trunk, there's a double tap right here. You tap, tap it twice and it just pops up like that. So it's not gonna lift up for you. But generally, as long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of the door, you can put your finger right here over the sensor indicated by these little lines to lock the doors. To unlock, unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle and it's like instant. Some vehicles, you have to put your hand back there just for a second, like a half, a fraction of a second. This is like instant unlocks the door. Really like that. There's also a physical key location here behind this plastic cover. The doors swing out quite wide. So you have this really large opening. You've got plenty of headroom and everything. It is a little bit low to the ground. The only thing about getting in and out of this vehicle is the Recaro seats. Um, they're the type of seats that you either like them or you don't. Um, in my particular case, I'm not a fan of them. Um, but getting in and out of, of this vehicle is just my personal preference. I would have the more basic seats. So here's the inside of the passenger side door. Now you'll notice a theme here, black, as far as the colors, but also this blue stitching throughout the vehicle. And it's a really nice little touch. So soft touch surfaces here, here, this is all like a, this is kind of like a uh, Nerf type soft plastic material. This is like a, um, a vinyl synthetic leather soft touch and you have the stitching here under here is your hard touch surfaces at the bottom now there's kind of a small pocket down under here um, you can put some stuff in there but it goes back in it's kind of strange because it has a spot that goes back in there so it goes way back in there see so you can put, I mean, it goes, so trying to get something out of this compartment is a little bit, bit of a pain. If you put something in there and it slides all the way back, now, you know, you're having to get out of the vehicle and reach, at, you know, get out on your knees or whatever and try to reach back there and try to find something. So, yeah, I, I guess if you had like a small umbrella or something like that, you can put it there. But as far as just in general, it's kind of a strange scenario in which you have a pocket, a storage area that's, you know, all the way back in there. But anyways, if this had like a cover that you can take off, it would be a little bit more usable. And it also has a little bit of a uh, steep incline. So it's, you know, unless you're taking off fast, things shouldn't go back there. But still, it's, it's something that you want to keep in mind. Because if you're missing something, it might be in there. <laughs> Now the Mustang emblem here on the seal plate does illuminate at night. Check out my night video. It's pretty cool. You can also change the ambient light and all kinds of stuff in this vehicle. It's awesome. Seats look great. Um, the comfort, see the thing about these Recaro seats is that they feel like to me that they're custom molded to somebody else. They just don't fit my body they're they're too narrow right in here they're too narrow in here and the bolsters are too firm there's no there's hardly any give here so it it is a negative experience driving in this vehicle with these seats basically the seats really are a drawback okay so here's the leg room you can see you have the stitching there on the side nice plenty of leg room here in the front unlike the back then you have a glove compartment, this locking. Push that to open it up. Smooth plastic on the inside. Then you have another badge here, high performance 2.3 liter. And it has a numbered, has a number here, L007. So I got 007 here. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Now the back seats, I mentioned the leg room isn't all that great. Well, 
these are kind of semi-functional seats to me. You can use them in a pinch, but they're really not for adults. Uh, I mean, you can put kids back here, car seats, stuff like that. Now you could put some adults back here in a pinch, um, but I certainly wouldn't want to be back here for a long period of time. They're nice contoured seats, um, but you know, leg room is an issue and uh, just overall, it's just a small space back there. And moving these seats forward and back is a little bit of a combination because a lot of vehicles, especially with a back seat, they have some kind of, see it has this release here. They have a release like that in which it releases to tilt the seat forward, but also slide it forward. But this one doesn't do that. All it does is tilt forward. You still have to use the handle up here to slide the seat forward. So if you're stuck in the back, um, you're basically, you know, it's not easy. You can't slide the feet seat forward sitting in the back. This only tilts. Um, so the same, and also it locks in place. So you have to release the lock to push it back. All right, so now we did that. Now we have to do this here, which those are common controls, but usually on the passenger side, uh, they have some kind of release to it releases both so you can get out if you're a back passenger This one doesn't have that looking at the back of the vehicle. It has a little Antenna right there. See a little bump right there and then there is a third brake light at the top of the rear glass And there's a little deck lid spoiler that matches the side mirrors and also the wheels with that dark metallic gray Gloss black here in the center portion. Nice Mustang emblem. And the backup camera is in a high, is in perfect position. It's high up and it's in the very center, which is perfect functional, uh, but also it's integrated well. It's not, it's not like it's tacked on, like it's something extra added onto the vehicle. A lot of vehicles have them under here in this low position where they get dirty easier and then they have them offset they look like they're just kind of tacked on like an aftermarket deal so this right here is fantastic very center in a high position so you can have good visibility and uh so love that so all leds back here um and the turn signals are sequential it's like a little animation thing going on and the reverse light is down here which is pretty interesting once again, you can check out my night video to know more about the lighting. It does have parking sensors back here. These little circles are your parking sensors. And it has a quad exhaust. And it has these little servos in which you can open and close chambers. So you can actually change the exhaust note slightly. It's very, very subtle. But uh, you can. it does have a really cool sound for a four-cylinder. I mean, driving this vehicle, it just... It just doesn't feel like a feel like or sound like a four-cylinder to me Okay, so opening up the trunk uh, you can of course use the key like I showed you or you can push this button under here Now the buttons kind of strange because it's It's down here next to the tag. I don't know it's something to get used to but um I notice as it gets dirty there a lot, so your hands are gonna get dirty touching it. So I guess just use the key, it'd be better. So you lift it up a little bit and then it goes the rest of the way by itself. So the cargo area, the trunk is actually pretty darn big. Um, as far as the space inside, and I have my stuff in here. But the only, the limitation with this trunk is the opening. So you can see there's not much, the opening is not very big. And the way the vehicle is designed, that's just the way it is. And that's the limiting factor um, because getting it, something big in here, you have to get it through the, the doorway basically. And in this case, um, I've actually tried to do this with another Mustang and um, something that looked like it would fit in here, it just wouldn't get through the opening. Um, so anyways, that's enough about that. Now you see it's all carpeted here on the sides. 
and a place for a net pocket back here as well and the carpeting is great but you don't have any up here so you have some exposed metal speakers wires stuff like that so see that you have these sharp objects so this is what i'm talking about this like this is like a sharp piece of metal sticking down and this right here is not so bad it's just things like this uh you have exposed metal that is not covered up with anything so if you're piling in luggage or anything like that and you're kind of cramming it in the trunk you're going to be scraping your stuff against that sh that sharp metal pieces sticking down and so it could potentially damage whatever you're putting in here so just keep that in mind um you know with vehicles because you can't really see you look open the trunk you look in there like this you don't see all that stuff you kind of have to really pay attention uh, and look under there to see if it's carpeted before you start cramming stuff in your trunk now of course you can fold down the seats now it's a 50 50 seat um seats that you can fold down so add to your cargo space which is really nice um because if you have a long box or something it's really handy especially with those seats aren't really that functional for as far as passengers now you could have one passenger and then still fold the other seat down if you need to um but having that the ability to fold down is great so under the underneath this floor is a tire inflator kit so there's no spare tire in this particular model you can it looks like you can add a spare tire probably a donut at least maybe a, a full-size spare i'm not sure unlikely but um but this one just does not have the spare tire something i would highly recommend adding to a vehicle it's probably as an option or something the fuel door is here on the driver's side which is convenient and it has a capless design that you don't have to worry about a cap or anything getting in the way the blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert indicator is on the side mirror it'll illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot or if you're backing out of a parking space and there's a vehicle coming from either way it'll illuminate the appropriate side to start it up as long as you have the key inside the vehicle you put your foot on the brake and hold the clutch and you simply push this button you don't have to hold the button you just push it Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat snaps in place in two places, unlike the passenger side. There's your accelerator, brake pedal, and clutch pedal, all with the raised rubber aluminum pedals, looking nice. And also, I don't know if you noticed this, the ambient lighting, I changed it when I was doing the night video to purple, so you can see the purple lighting under here. And it has a nice footrest here on the far left. take a look under the hood to open the hood there is a latch in the very center so there's the center line you just reach in and move it to the left and lift up it's kind of a heavy hood <laughs> so there's easy to see because they have it yellow but uh, it does require a prop to hold up and there's the prop there and it swings up to where it shows that arrow the underside of the hood is has some insulation. Then you can see they have little cutouts for the air to flow through those vents on the hood. It does have a seal across the back and the front and the sides. This helps out with airflow and noise. Insulation all the way across the back of the firewall. And it has this brace, just like the GT brace that connects um, from one strut tower to the other, stabilizing the front end, give you more support. You notice it has this big plastic cover, uh, and then it has this right here, and it kind of makes it look like, like intake pieces there, um, but it's basically just you know open because it's a four cylinder and not like a V8 or anything. I thought that was kind of interesting. And it is a turbocharged 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine, and it's paired to a six-speed manual transmission. It also has the MagnaRide suspension system, which is fantastic. Uh, it, it's just a um, it uses 
I don't know. I'll put a link in the description. It's kind of advanced. It's it's a um, it uses the ability to mag magnetize using electricity the and and change the stiffness of the uh, suspension system. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. The inside of the driver's side doors looks just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So your power windows, they're one touch up and down, and they go nice and smooth. Then your side mirrors are adjusted here. Just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. And it has manually adjusted seats here on the pass driver and passenger side. But the one thing that the driver has and the passenger doesn't is a height adjustment right here. So you can adjust the height of the seat. And just looking at the seats, they look fantastic. Uh, they look awesome. It's kind of like a racing seat or something like that. To the left of the steering column, you have the trunk release right here. And this is pretty cool. You push this and it slides out this long skinny pocket that is um, felt lined. So it goes in there quite a ways. Uh, so, so you can put some stuff in there. Pens, I don't know, something that can fit in there. It's a very strange size, but uh, I'm sure it's functional for something. Yeah, yeah, you can put some cash in there. Look at that. And then you have your headlight controls here. Has automatic parking headlights. You can turn on the headlights parking and then off and then your fog lights are controlled here and then you have your dimmer switch for your interior gauges now when you turn off the headlights you still have some exterior lights on the vehicle uh, so you can check out my night video to see what's going on there and it has a tilt and telescoping steering column and it locks in place with a lever on the far right so on the right side of the column I'm sitting in the driver's seat checking it out and I have the seat all the way down and all the way back. And it feels like I'm a toddler because I have so much leg room here. This is way too far back for me to actually push the pedals and drive the car safely um, with a manual transmission especially. But, um, so yeah, this is, this is amazing as far as the leg room. So if you're really tall, this vehicle might be for you. Of course, the back seat, there's no room back there, but still. <laughs> Um, you do have a lot here as a driver. So it has a leather wrapped steering wheel. And it's very soft and comfortable. Very, very good quality feeling. Like this is one of the softer steering wheels I've felt. And it has, it, it just, it's just very comfortable. It's one of the most comfortable steering wheels. And you have quite a bit of buttons here. We'll start here on the left side. Um, it has the volume for your radio. Change to your tracks or your radio stations there. You can also mute your radio, your radio here. So this is all radio related. Down here is cruise control related. You have on and off, resume, cancel, and then set. Now, it's kind of weird because as you're driving, it's kind of not as intuitive. It's something to get used to anyway as far as the positions of these buttons here. This one's fine. Uh, these are kind of a little bit strange and have to get used to. So here on the right side, these buttons correspond with the screen. Basically, there's no gauges, but it does have a big screen. And I'll get to that in just a few minutes. Uh, your voice recognition is here. You also have the back button for that. Um, and you have quick access buttons as far as your radio, navigation, phone. You know, you can hang up, answer calls, that kind of stuff. Then you have your settings. Um, and then this little pony right here uh, Little Mustang and then that goes into other stuff. So um, I guess this time we'll, go, we'll get when we get to the screen I'll show you a lot of this stuff Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side Your turn signal and your headlight dimmer switch is here on the left side. This vehicle has a, an extremely impressive gauge Cluster, it's basically just a screen a big screen, but it's really laid out great um, this is the track view, and this is the view that I like, you know, just using it. And it has the RPMs there on the left side, your tachometer, in, in an actual numeric form. Also, you have the bar 
So that's pretty cool. And then you have your speedometer and you notice how large these, these numbers are. So just at a quick glance, you can see these. Um, now these are customizable gauges that you can choose to have there if you'd like. Um, you have your in engine cool and temperature there, uh, miles to empty your fuel gauge, all that good stuff. But, um, but this is all customizable as far as the view and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and push this, this little pony right here. We're going to push the pony and then we have this options, these options, my mode, exhaust mode. I'm going to go into that. You have quiet, normal, sport, and then track. And then you have quiet start in which you could turn on because it's kind of loud, a cold start's kind of loud. So you can have that um, activated as well. So it's pretty neat. Uh, the, 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 the difference in sound is not, it, like, it's not like the GT where it's, you can hear it just at an idle. So it's not quite that, that much. Um, and then you have your track apps, uh, acceleration timer, brake performance, line lock, lap timer, um, start option let's go into that you have a drag race countdown and racetrack countdown um, so that's pretty cool uh, performance shift indicator uh, so this is you want to set up a shift point and you have a shift tone and a shift light so I actually give you an audible and um, you know like a, a visible thing so you can have it on your techno tachometer um, you know different locations here uh, launch control uh, we can change the RPMs or act and also activate the launch control if we want. Uh, this is where we can uh, show specific gauges. So you can see that's the gauges I have. If we go back into there, uh, we can configure these and choose the ones that we want. Uh, my color, this is cool at nighttime. You can uh, change, you can check out my, my night video on this because you can change all the interior colors, ambient colors, gauge colors, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so this is the cluster appearance. So I had it on track. Remember I said I had it on track. So let's put it on sport. All right, so now let's get out of here. So this is the sport mode, the sport view. So it kind of has a regular kind of speedometer with the uh, di digital speedometer as well. Um, then it has these RPMs that swing over like a regular dial, but then it goes straight, which is pretty interesting. You also have the uh, the numeric value as well. All right, so let's go to here. Let's go to normal. So you can see what that looks like. And that's the normal view, according to that menu. All right. Uh, and then you can have it change with the drive mode. So as you change, you know, sport mode or whatever, it's gonna change the view here. And I think that's pretty cool. So, and also you'll know what, what if you're in sport mode or something, um, because the gauges will be drastically different. All right. So yeah, so that's the kind of the rundown of that, those particular settings. That's the little pony button settings. Um, then you have this button here with the little gears. We can push that, and then we have some more information here that we can change the kilometers per hour. Um, then you have advanced settings here. Your key, the vehicle. This would be like lighting, locks, that kind of stuff. This is more normal settings here that you found in most vehicles. All right, so those are some of the things you can do here on the screen. Just visually, the screen is awesome. It's just just a very impressive and well done. Like a lot, there's other vehicles that have a full screen here, uh, but this one is really well done as far as the layout and the large. I think that's why I like the track view because it has the really large numbers, so you can see them easier. It's very very straightforward. There's no trying to figure out needles or anything like that, or trying to squint and try to read numbers. Um, you know, especially if your eyes are on the road for long periods of time and then you're transitioning to the gauges, uh, having large, easy to, to focus on uh, numbers and stuff is, is nice. 
So really well done. And the colors are nice too. I think they just did a great job on the screen in my opinion. You do have the outside temperature here now and then the, this is your compass. So the vehicle's facing south. So it'll give you an idea of what's going on there. Above the touch screen, you have two gauges. This is your oil pressure. So this is a normal, um, this is a normal thing that you would find in a vehicle. Just to, and it's usually in the gauges, you know, in front of you. But this is separate. So this is your oil pressure. Shows how much pressure the oil is in the engine. Um, but this one is only because it is a, uh, a turbocharged engine. So with the turbocharged, the engine has a. Um, in general, the, the vehicle sucks in air using the cylinders. Um, but as you rev the engine, it spins up the turbine in the, in the turbo, and instead of having to suck in, in air, it actually pushes in air. Um, so you can see where it goes from a vacuum. It'll go up to a... It'll, it'll help push in air into the engine, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so that's what they call boost. So it's boosting the air pressure. So in a regular engine, it the engine has to work. So part of it, the power of the engine is is being taken up by drawing in fresh air, because the engine runs off of air. I mean, as far as volume goes, it's a massive amount of air and a little bit of fuel. So it's constantly having to pull in and push out air. So with a turbocharged engine, the intake is easier because it's pushing in air. Now the exhaust is harder, but it's it's not a big deal because you have a lot of exhaust gases, um, you know, kind of like that, that pr leftover pressure from the combustion and it pushes the turb turbine and spins it. So it's not a big deal as far as the exhaust. It's only on the intake is what you need help pulling in that air and it actually pushes in the air and, and helps the engine pull it in, I guess. It's like a push-pull type thing. So here's the touch screen and I'm getting quite a bit of a glare. I repositioned the vehicle a couple times trying to get rid of this glare, but it's just, uh, it's only on the camera. My eyes, I can see the, the, the screen fine, uh, but the camera wants to have a lot of glare. But anyways, um, as you can see from the flickering of the camera, that it is an LED backlit screen. So let me change the you can see I'm changing the uh, the shutter speed to try to get rid of that. Okay, so right there. Okay, so now we have, so you can see here's the uh, the touch screen. Um, so we have this little home right here. So let's go ahead and hit that. And there is a little bit of a lag in the in this particular uh, this this system. I don't know if you notice just pushing the button. It kind of has this little bit of a lag. But um, so right here with the home button, it has show. This is customizable. It's showing the map. Uh, what your radio is doing and then your phone so um, in this particular case I don't have my phone connected because it interferes with the camera um, and then you have these shortcut buttons at the bottom so you have the radio your climate phone navigation apps and settings so let's start off with the radio so you can see it's uh, right now it's in satellite radio it shows you what's playing uh, and you can do a direct tune you can change your audio sources here AM FM satellite radio Bluetooth um, you can also play, you know, music through a USB device or whatever, and it'll pop up here when other devices are available. But right now, whatever is available will show. All right, you have your presets there at the bottom as well, and I like the way they put the little the channel icon in the presets as well. All right, so the next option at the bottom is your your climate control, and you have your uh, temperature for the driver and passenger. It's a dual zone. Um, you do have automatic, which I, which I have turned off. Fan speed, where you want the air to blow, all that good stuff. You also have a menu button, which you can uh, choose to, you know, have more controls. It's basically, it's just an extra, uh, extra stuff here. Uh, it does have a heated steering wheel, which is controlled um, here on the screen, but also below, and I'll show you where that is in a minute. Your phone, once you connect the phone, you have access to your phone calls, your, your you can play music off of your phone, um, you can, your, your phone book, uh, you can call people, receive calls, all that stuff. Navigation is here. Now this little bottom part gets in the way until you stop touching the screen 
for a little while and then it'll go away but it takes a little while but it's still kind of in the way and you see this bar at the top's in the way as well so um, it doesn't give you that you touch it it doesn't give you that full view you know you could do a pinch zoom if you like uh, but it seems like there's just a little bit too much stuff going on the outside of the map that gets in the way and of course you can put in a particular um, you know address and all that stuff it has the full functionality of the navigation system then your apps uh, you do have Apple CarPlay Android and Auto capabilities um, you can connect different devices multiple cell phones can connect it'll be in a priority system um, and then you can choose you know your mobile devices there travel link which is pretty cool you can find gas stations and and look for certain price gas and all kinds of different things with travel link and then your settings last but not least are here um, you can adjust your sound your clock your bluetooth all that stuff here you can go into and adjust navigation settings like you know you want the fastest route or you want the you know avoid highways or avoid tolls stuff that kind of stuff you can set up a Wi-Fi hotspot in the vehicle if you like. And then you have, um, you know, apps that go on your cell phone for, you know, different different options that you can have there. Um, and also a valet mode, that's pretty cool. So that's kind of the quick rundown of the screen here. Um, you have your, your icon, icons at the bottom in which you can make selections and go to just different screens. And it has a physical volume knob, tune through the stations, um, play and pause, and change through your tracks. You can also turn off the radio here. So it just turns off all the audio, uh, the screen stays on. And you have some redundancy as far as your, as far as your climate control. So you can adjust the temperatures, you have up and down here, and passenger, and all that good stuff fan speed but now it's not a hundred percent you can't adjust where you want the air to blow and stuff here so, so you do have to rely on the screen for some things but this the the quick stuff is easy that's that you use all the time is here so that's good we saw the start button to start the vehicle but then you have these these uh, switches so this is your four-way flashers this is the turn off your traction control so if you want to spin tires you're gonna have to turn that off a default will be on this this next one is to adjust the stiffness of your steering so it go you put it doesn't go down it goes up and as you go up it'll cycle through different settings so and it'll tell you what you have here so you have normal sport comfort and then back to normal so sport will be stiffer comfort will be looser and then normal is kind of in between and then this last switch, once again, it doesn't go down, only up. And you cycle through your drive mode. And as you do that, remember we set it to where it'll adjust your gauges. So I'm gonna show you what the gauges look like. It actually shows you what you go through. So I'm lifting up. So there's wet roads, no wet, normal, sport, track, and drag strip. So that's your different views. And it's not just gonna change, it's gonna change the uh, the stiffness of the suspension system, the stiffness of the steering, and um, you know, tune the vehicle for those appropriate things. So I'm not going to have drive around. It's also gonna, if you're on, if you're on the drag strip, it's also gonna disable uh, some of your safety features like your uh, traction control that kind of stuff so uh, <laughs> you want to make sure that you're in the appropriate drive mode when you're just driving around you don't want to have it in like drag strip mode when you're just normal driving especially in the rain okay so there's a USB port under here and there's a storage pocket area 12 volt power supply here on the right side Here's your shifter, and reverse is all the way to the left and up. You just have to lift up this. Other than that, it's normal. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. 
So lift that up, pull it over here and put it in reverse so we can see the backup camera. And also the backup camera comes on, but also your parking sensors as well. And it has an active guidelines. It has this little shadow one that moves. Um, and it has the static colored ones. And you can see with it being in the very center, um, you can see from all around both sides, it's not as distorted and it has a high view. So you see a little bit of the back of the vehicle so you can see where the vehicle is in relationship to other things without it being distorted. Also the parking sensors, if there's something back there that you might back into, it gives you a little indicator here visually on where that object is. You can also push this plus and get more of a close-up view of directly behind the vehicle. All right, has a hand brake, parking brake here. With a manual transmission, I think this is essential. A, a manual one, like so. Then there's your cup holders, and it's illuminated. And in the night video, I changed these to purple, so you can check that out if you like. Really nice at night. And these have these little articulating arms to accommodate for different size cups. And it's open in the center, so you can utilize this space for other things besides just cups. Okay, so this little armrest, it's kind of soft. Um, it's actually quite soft. And it has blue stitching and a French pattern there. It lifts up like so. Now, the, the lever for it is here on the side. So you, you release it and then you can lift it up and it's kind of spring loaded. So you let go it just flips up uh, So it's not going to flap back down on you. It's not going to flop down on you uh, But it just wants to go up And there's a little hook right here for putting like a pin or a tire gauge in here And it does have some illumination in here as well and a USB port and a 12 volt power supply in here as well see that you can see better with something in here it's all black uh, I wish they'd have the bottom portion it's like a rubber piece like so and if this was a lighter color then it would help you'd be able to see in here a little bit better um, but since it's all black then it's kind of absorbs all the light and there's these little pockets in there too. You can put some coins or whatever. Once again, you can't see them because they're dark. And there's places to put wires in and out of the compartment here. It has an auto dim rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming now because I have the shade over the light sensor and the light sensor is here on this side. It has tap lights. Now these that look like standard bulbs, they don't look like they're LEDs. The visor has a mirror and lights, standard bulbs, no LEDs there. A little clip for putting your registration or something. It also extends out. And you have your home link garage door opener control here. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So it does have pretty good sized pillars there in the back. Um, but you can see it has these windows. As you look over my, sh over my shoulder, I, see, I can see through that window a little bit. And it's something that's actually not so bad. I hadn't really had a problem with the visibility. Uh, driving this vehicle even though you know I'm used to my Challenger has like the worst blind spots in the world so this is actually an improvement for sure it also has the rear cross traffic alert and the backup camera and parking sensors and all that stuff as well to help you out but anyways uh, thank you for watching I have a night video test drive video and other videos on this vehicle uh, just kind of detailing my experience with it. So if you want to check that, those out, I'll have a link in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.